welcome back to another live witches chat i am fire lotus the witch if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get all the notifications of when i go live and or post videos so today is specifically going to be talking about land spirits why is this i made a stitch of a video and a lot of people wanted a video being made so instead of making multiple Siri TikTok, I decided to do it in this live video. So we're also going to wait to see if um, people start trickling in. But good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing great. Definitely feeling some of that retrograde energy. We love it. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be focusing on land spirits today. Good morning. Good morning. Um... Basically, we're going to go over the basics of how to start building that relationship, why it's important to and possibly incorporate these into your practice. Um, and even if you're not a practitioner, you can still work with your land spirits because if you uh, do homesteading, if you're a gardener or anything like that, it can definitely help. Um, and with this, most people automatically bring up natives, native spirits when it comes to this. Good morning. Uh, we're not really going to talk about that that much, be just because I'm not, well, you know. But anyways, all right, land spirits. What are they? Basically, some people, and I also consider some of them being elementals. They were not, they were, at any point in time, were they ever living. Um, so I also like to call these ancient energies, if you will. Um, working with your land spirits can be tricky depending on, for one, not all, not all your spirit on the land, we're going to say land spirit, there we go. Not all land spirits uh, will have anything to do with you. Some of them literally just want to be left the fuck alone. Others, through, um, in a way, daily, weekly, monthly rituals, you can eventually start building up that relationship. Uh, now, a lot of people, when I start to talk about this, they're automatically like altars and... Um, offerings and all of that. It can be simpler than that. Taking care of your land, for one. Um, picking up trash in your local neighborhood. Um, and then specifically for your area, it can be extremely crucial to tap into the energy of your land spirits because they can assist you in magic. They can assist you with also protecting your property and your land. Um, Basically, walk out to your property. I do this every single property. If I'm going to perform any type of magic on, I do this as soon as I get to the property. You can do this in your head. I prefer it to be actual vocal. But basically, you're going to introduce yourself however you introduce yourself in the magical world and basically claim that you are a witch. Um, you're not really going to fuck with the land, change anything dramatically. You know, basically state your purpose. Um, now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, okay, how do I know if I've made contact? That's where energy work comes in at. You've got to learn how to pick up on energies. Um, when I mean energy work, I don't just mean doing magic. I mean being able to sense or read the room, if you will. Um, now, the cool thing is with land spirits is they can physically do things with the property to actually show you that they're there. Uh, small story time, when we were in uh, for May Bon, I was in Mount Chiha at a pagan gathering, and the wind, like, it was not windy whatsoever, and when they started doing the circle, uh, acorns, rocks started being thrown, like, where the circle was at, and then there were multiple times where, through leaves crunching and moving, it literally looked and sounded like you had people, or spirits, if you will, walk up, because they're very curious. Like, I've always said, when you're doing magic, when you are summoning energy or conjuring that energy, you are a beacon to anything around you. They will see you, and a lot of the times, most spirits will be very curious. Um, but, okay, so once you do that, depending on how things go, um, and also, when it comes to this type of working with, like, this type of spirits, you're not always going to get an instant result. It could take weeks. It could take months. Again, like I said before, not all of them want anything to do with us whatsoever. Um, then, after you've properly introduced yourself, I would try to create a specific area, not necessarily an altar or a shrine, but a specific area where you will go to connect with that said spirit. Um, if you really want to try it, ask them to guide you 
to where it needs to be. Now, a lot of times when you ask a spirit to do that, they're not possessing you, but you will feel an actual tug, like a physical tug of where they're trying to direct you at. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but for one, having a garden or having flowers or natural vegetation around on your property that help with like insects and bees, you're already working with your land spirits right then and there. Working with the animals is a way of working with the land spirits because you have to think by our regionalism with this, um, but you have to think of your property being like a bubble. With that being said, I'm not saying that like how we're at, say a trailer park, right? Not every lot is going to have multiple different types of land spirits. A lot of the time, it's just one or two land spirits that kind of control an area or they're kind of over an area. Um, now, if you live out in the actual bumfuck middle of nowhere, the boonies, the sticks, whatever you want to call it, you may actually have multiple ones. And pointers, if you have any type of running water near you, especially here in Florida, because we have the aqua firm, there's a lot of running water around us. What does that have to do with spirits? Running water to spirits, it's like a battery, basically. It's an unlimited supply of energy. We have a natural spring-fed lake, so obviously we have water all around us. Uh, now, with that, not that I'm going to speak on it, but if you live here in the United States or Canada, obviously there are going to be some type of natives on there as well. They're the same. They may have something to do with you, or they'll want absolutely nothing to do with you, and you won't even know that they're there. Um... But basically, you're going to go out and just like I created the 30-day um, ancestral challenge where you just start talking to your ancestors, you're going to do the same process here. You need to be able to create a line of communication between the spirit you're trying to talk to and you. Always remember this when it comes to any type of metaphysical shit, when it comes to messages, omens, or anything like that. Spirits are not going to send you a message that our brains cannot comprehend, okay? Okay. No matter who they are, that's the reason I'm like, you know, you don't need somebody else trying to tell you what your ancestors look like or what this looks like or what this looks like. You yourself have that ability. Uh, any person on this earth that is living has that ability as long as they will put in the time and effort to, to build that up. What I mean by communication is exactly that. You've got to figure out a way of how they can commune with you or communicate with you versus how you can communicate with them and how you yourself receive those signs. Um, it's kind of like if you're a neurodivergent, ADHD, um, basically learning to, instead of looking at it as a disability, learn to use them to your benefit. Um, and yes, it is possible. I do it on a regular day basis. Um, but so cool thing is with working with land spirits, they are different than we'll say like hauntings, right? The reason this is, is because if they ever show themselves to you, you will be completely fucking mind blown. Um, I've had two experiences where I've considered what I saw to be land spirits. They were basically giant ass orbs, like bigger than my head, probably the size of like a volleyball. Um, they were solid. They had two layers to them, as in there was the solid color right here, and then they have almost like an aura. Um, and when we first got here and I introduced myself, they showed it, it showed itself in this gorgeous goldish oranges, um, almost like a burnt yellow color, F came out of the tree line, flew like this, and then just went back and vanished. Uh, there were three people, including me, four total, that saw that. Me, my partner, who is slowly starting to practice, and two people who do not practice whatsoever. Um, it blew their minds. It blew my mind because I was not expecting it. Now, on the most haunted property I've ever lived on, on the 4th of July, which I'm going to post a uh, video on that. I need to write that down. I've been saying that for a while on the videos that we got. Um, hold on. Okay, um, but I started, we really wasn't even working with the land spirits there. It was just much, we were trying to see what's on the property. But again, it showed itself. Um, I saw something and then my partner and our friend that was with us kind of saw something different, slightly different. Um, I had somebody else who tried to uh, reach out to work with their lands, uh, their um, land spirits, and they kind of got a very mixed signal. As in, they felt very, very uncomfortable, intimidating. 
uh, you may feel that as well. You have to realize that these, what I consider elementals, they have their own energy, and a lot of the times, it's what I call old energy. Um, from the rare occasions, I've came across something that what I consider just old. Like, it's not good, bad, evil, or anything like that. It's just old. Um, they kind of come off like that. They're extremely intimidating, and sometimes it'll put your body into a fight or flight. Just know, though, that they're not going to harm you. Um, they're not, like, viciously going to attack you or anything like that. Um, but start trying to make contact. Talk to them, just like some people talk to their plants. Talk to the land spirits. And over time, if they actually do want to have anything to do with you and they start to accept you, here are some of the signs that could randomly happen. Uh, this is also, um, I've read it in multiple books, a sign if you work with a divine being that that divine being could also be blessing you. Um, <clears throat> randomly having flowers or a plant that normally has never grown on your property. For example, in this case, we'll use a wild rose. So say you did this ritual or you did this right, if you will, and you started communication with it, right? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have a wild rose that just blooms on your property. That could be an indication that it has accepted you and basically to start building that communication. Now, if you sense in any way, shape, or form that something on your property has shifted, I would slightly back off. Do not, under any circumstances, unless you know for a fact that nothing will come up to prevent you from doing it, do not try to set up a schedule with, like, I'm going to give you an offering on every new moon or full moon, only because you never know how chaotic life is. Um, but slowly reach out with them. I started to reach out with the ones on here, specifically with the trees that I have and the trees that I work with. Um, normally, I've always associated oak trees with wisdom. Um, and most older, bigger trees, I kind of look at as like the elder of that area, do the same thing. Also, if you have any type of mushrooms around there, try to find the um, mycelium. Mycelium, basically the uh, fungus that connects every living thing that has roots together. Um, find a mushroom in your yard and talk to it. Because, like I said, the way mushrooms work and the reason that well, recently we also just realized, um, through mycelium, everything is completely connected. Uh, trees, bushes, grass, dirt, herbs, all of it, if it's buried under the ground, it's connected. And the mycelium is so smart that if it senses one of the trees that it's connected to is sick in any way, it can actually restrict the nutrients and vegetation that it sends to it or the nutrients that it sends to it and it can kind of cut it off. But... Trees communicate with each other, right? You can do this with working with your land spirits. Um, now, if you want to go full on out and dedicate an entire area to them, you totally can. But listen to your natural instinct. Well, how do I do this if I have anxiety and everything like that? It's the same thing, which I'll be doing a story time on, of why I associate and how I've started creating my own correspondences to things, which is... When you're trying to kind of use your uh, intuition, the first three to four things after you've asked a question that randomly pops into your head, nine times out of ten, if it makes sense, that's spirit trying to communicate with you. You can do the same thing with going and picking up a random crystal. The first three things that, that you associate that with, you can use those as correspondences. For an example, when this was done with me, I, uh, with Amethyst, I heavily associate it with thunderstorms and lightning and basically just rain. Um, to the fact that the only time I actually chart, fully charge my Amethyst is during thunderstorms. Um, not to mention I found out shortly after that, that Amethyst is an amplifier. So you can add Amethyst to multiple practice or to multiple workings that you have to amplify the energy that's already there. Um... But working with your land spirits can benefit you in so many different ways, especially if you're a homesteader and a gardener. Um, so many things, and you can even take that farther by also working with your house spirit. Yes, every house, no matter brand new, small, little, whatever, it has, if you are an amethyst like I am, where we believe everything has an essence or a soul to it, you can start communicating with it. Well, what's the benefits of that? Well, if you ever have anything go wrong, Nine times out of ten, your house will let you know, just like your land spirits can also let you know. Um, I've been living here for, I want to say, five years. 
maybe four, um, off and on. Well, for the past two years, I've been living here straight up. And multiple ways that I work with my ancestors or work with the land spirits around here. For one, I've started gardening. Um, for two, uh, with that, make sure you do not plant any invasive species. Um, try to get back to a more natural setting. What I mean by that is one of the reasons that we keep the front of our yard very wild is because we have more wildlife in our yard. Plus, we moved out here the animals didn't move in the city, if that makes any sense. Um, but you can also learn. They can teach you certain things after you've built this relationship. They can teach you They can teach you secrets of the land. As in, maybe you have a gold spot. I don't know what that's actually called. But, you know, those random spots in your yard where more things grow um, better there than any other spot. They can help you with that. You can also use the land spirit or work with the land spirit to also help find water on the property. There are major plumbing companies and well companies that still use water dousing to this day, which is basically going outside, getting a stick that almost looks like the rune, um, where it's split right here and then it goes straight down the middle and you hold it and ask it to help you find flowing water. And normally it will either completely bend down or it will tug when you actually find it. Um, can working with your land spirits be slightly dangerous? Well, yes. Um, if you try to reach out and you get, like, say, a tree falls or, um, you know, something like an oh shit moment happens on your property, yes. Um, I personally do not believe any land spirits would be vicious where it tries to attack you or harm you or even kill a livestock or anything like that just because... I don't know. To me, that's more of a humanizing thing where, like, we try to Christianize demons and shit like that. But um, if at any point in time you do get, like, that gut feeling that something is off, cut communication right then and there. Um, with that, though, too, and the reason I hesitate on making things like this is because I don't want somebody who is very new to learning how to work with spirits and then say that they already actually have a malevolent spirit on their property. I don't want them to start making contact with that and then having that oh shit moment realizing that. Um, is there a difference between, will you know if you have a malicious spirit versus like a land spirit? Yes and no. Again, you're going to have to read energy. Um, the reason I say that is because we all know of the trickster spirits where they will present themselves as something just to get trust in you, and then you eventually find out that it's completely wrong. With that being said, this goes with deities as well. Most spirits uh, that are not tricksters, they're not going to ask you to do something that you would not do. Like, they're not going to ask you to do something that goes against your moral compass. Um, so if you are working with anything and they start trying to get you to do things where you're like your moral compass is like, no, thank you, um, you may be working with a trickster spirit. They're not going to ask you for your blood. Why would they need it? Um, but yeah, working with your land spirits can not, it can also elevate your practice because if you perform outside, you can ask them to either one, be a guardian to make sure nothing comes around or fucks with you. Um, I've actually been hit one time while I, or they tried to hit me, but I was actually in the middle of doing a circle. Um, but there are a lot of things, and like I said before, feeding the birds, feeding the wildlife in general, if you are in a situation to where you can do that. Now, with that being said, I know there are some people that are, say, uh, they're in a park, a camper park, or something like that, where they actually have bears and wildlife that you wouldn't normally want to attract. You don't always have to give offerings as food. Um, it can be coffee, tobacco, liquor. Um, like I said, you can dedicate a place to them. Um, just overall general cleaning up the property or clearing some things out can also help them. Um, interesting fact, this current month, um, there's a thing that's going around and it's called No Mo May, which is basically you leave one area in your front yard where you don't cut anything down. You just let it grow wild. Um, interesting fact, you know how a lot of people, especially here in Florida, they do not like leaves in their pro on their property because they just want to make... You know, they want to have that perfect yard. Removing those fallen leaves actually damage. It can damage the soil because it's robbing it of nutrients that will eventually break down and turn into food. Not to mention, 
um, fallen leaves are a lot of homes and protection for a lot of insects like grubs and beetles and moths and stuff like that. Um, so if you take that away, you're also taking them away. Um, a newer project that I'm starting here because I will be raking one area, but I'm going to be moving all of those down to the site into our property and I'm going to create a compost pile. Um, I would also look into, instead of going to the Dollar Tree or Dollar General like I've done before, try to research locally non-invasive wildfires, uh, wildflowers. Here in Florida, it's very easy because we have entire highways where they do it at, where they'll plant them. Um, but depending on what state you're looking at, go to the Arbor Foundation, uh, type in your state, and you should be able to find information on local wildflowers that are non-invasive. Um, there were three plants that I wanted to bring onto my property, but they're an invasive plant. So that would be a very no-no. Um, so yeah, I, I think I covered everything. I'm still getting new, used to getting my knowledge out of my head into the videos. Um, now if anybody has any questions, drop them, let me know and I'll answer them. Um, but it, a lot of people online and even in books make it seem like working with these spirits, you have to be this great awakened person. You don't. You just have to, you have to be aware to the environment around you. And again, you've got to learn how to read energy um, or at least sense it. Now, that's something I've not been able to fully figure out how to put into a video yet. Um, I'm working on it, though. Slowly working on it. Um, now, what happens if you piss your land spirit off? You're going to want to... Oh, with that being said, if you live here in the United States and or Canada, if you are outside doing magic, watch Burning Dragon's Blood. Dragon's Blood resin is extremely harsh to native spirits, and I'm assuming land spirits as well. So if you do get into a predicament like that, burn sweet grass, palo santo, something sweet right after that. Or even duck tobacco if you can get it. Um, I think it's called... No. Is it duck tobacco or rabbit tobacco? I think it's called rabbit tobacco. Um, but yeah, if you piss it off, try doing giving an offering. Some people have also connected that land spirits are basically the fae. Eh, I, eh, I don't know where I stand with that one. Um, but yeah, now another reason they're like, well, how do I know if I piss them off? If you randomly plant something and it's doing great, and then all of a sudden you wake up and overnight it's dead, that's probably that's a probably good reason that uh yeah. Um but yeah, I think that's that's going to be at least that conversation. Um, I'm trying to go over mentally in my head to make sure I did not leave anything out. Obviously, don't be disrespectful. That would be like, like when you go to a graveyard, do you just start cussing up a storm? No, be respectful. These are ancient, ancient things. Um, but in general, that should start you on your path. Um, and oh, I did want to mention... Land spirits have different personalities. So like I said before, there will be some that will be eager to work with you and others you'll either have to build trust with and then some, they're just, they want to have nothing to do with you whatsoever. Uh, be careful though. Be careful with that because I wasn't even working with the land spirits, but something had followed me home. There's a series about it on TikTok. Nothing's happened so far, but be careful with that too. Like I said, listen to your gut. Um, if you get a, if you get that feeling like you should not be there right now, that's a normal, that's a normal indicator, especially when it comes to spirits that you shouldn't be there right now. Um, but yeah, uh, bioregionalism and also is also an amazing thing to start incorporating into your practice as well. Bioregionalism is just the study of the bioregion as in the area you're living in the um, study and documentation for at least about a year. That way you get through all seasons. And the reason this is important is because, like I said before, um, if you have a nest of blue jays on your property that they, they're there every year, you're used to seeing them, which means if you ask for a divine sign and then you see one, you, is it a sign or is it just it, they live on my property? But if you keep track of the animals that you are used to seeing on your property throughout an entire year and season, you're going to be able to know if they're acting out of the norm, if there's something you've never seen, like uh, about a month ago, I think it's been about a month now, uh, we had two turkeys on their property. We've never had turkeys on our property whatsoever. 
Um, snakes. We do not actually, we don't really have a lot of snakes on our property. We've only seen probably five the entire time that we've been here. So normally if we do see a snake, it's some type of a sign, depending on what's going on on the circumstances outside of that. Um, or at least it is in my life and in my practice. But yeah, that that's, and literally it's just like working with your uh, ancestors. Start that communication. Let them know that you want to start working with them. Um, and like I said, even if you're not a practitioner and you come across this video, if you are a gardener or a homesteader, you can also benefit from working with your spirit, uh, your land spirits. So, yeah, and like I said, they may be able to actually gift you knowledge. With that, it's kind of going to be like, I describe it kind of like cleric sentience, cleric cognizance, where you're basically, you, you know things that you shouldn't, you should not know. Um, it kind of just pops into your head uh, but yeah and I mean not to mention in general working in the dirt and shit like that it helps with depression and multiple other things and also as always talk to your trees talk to your plants talk to your house it, it benefits okay and even on a psychological level talking to yourself helps you strategize so you're you're getting multiple things here uh, now, like I said before, I would not necessarily start saying, you know, on every full moon, I'm going to give you an offering. I tried doing that. It went horribly wrong just because, well, we're humans and we get fucked around a lot. So much shit happens that we can't control. Um, if you are going to do something like that, set it for like, I don't know, the first on every day and make it something to where unless you're out of town, you'll still be able to do. Um... But, I mean, yeah, there, there's really no risk, like I said, as long as you don't fucking piss anybody off. Don't be respectful. Don't invite them into your house. Um, that's just an old school thing. Um, but, in general, yeah, that, that's how you work with your land spirits. Um, again, I'm going to make this short because I am keeping this up as my video on land spirits. Um, and the next time that we go out and about with uh, the little outing adventure that we had, uh, me and my partner, I'll also be making more content outdoors about working with your land spirits. Because here in Florida, there is a lot of spiritual activity um, depending on where you go. But again, we live in Florida and the United States, Canada, you're going to have a lot of native spirits there too. But if you go check out, um, and it's on my YouTube, uh, it's a 10-minute video of our outings that we went uh, when we went on our nature hike. I believe I posted that specific video. There are multiple areas where there are mounds all out there. And let me tell you, those spirits out there were extremely fucking interesting. It was so weird because, by the way, working with your land spirits, what I meant by sensing things, your entire property will change um, if you piss them off. You know those moments in like movies and shit where, or in real life, where like you're walking outside and all of a sudden it just goes dead fucking quiet. There's not a bird. There's not an insect. Yeah. Um, I've even incorporated working cicadas into my practice. Um, and it's really, really cool. One day, hopefully, I'm going to be able to get a video on that. Not that I like videotaping when I'm actually doing rituals outside. Um, but, uh, yeah, the entire energy will completely change and what i mean by that if you go watch that video i th think if not i'll uh upload it today plus it helps me get shit out of my storage um there were moments where like because the trail that we went to the terrain changed dramatically throughout the trail um and there was the first kind of path in a way if you will that we walked through as soon as we crossed two tree lines you could feel the energy completely change. Like, the entire atmosphere changed. And it happened multiple times. And then we kept being drawn to certain locations, but we didn't want to, like, get off the trail. Um, so, yeah, that, that one's that one. Uh, let me know if y'all would... I'm planning on, the next time we go out and about, and we have time to, I'm planning on stopping by a graveyard and uh, filming a video with my partner's actually going to be holding the phone, which is going to be amazing for me. Um, but I'm going to be doing one breaking down graveyard etiquette, or the, at least the ones that I know, um, of things to do, because the last thing you want to do is pissed off, piss off the guardian of a graveyard and or cemetery. Um, they will fuck your world up. Um, not to mention if you're not safe enough, when you work with, cel cel not celestial, 
Uh, when you work with certain things, like say at an actual crossroads, um, you can bring home what are known as like tricksters or hitchhikers. Uh, they're not really, some can really fuck your world up by like actually haunting you, but others, you, you just don't want that energy here. Um, like I've said before, if you go to any haunted location that you know for a fact is haunted, or even at a cemetery or graveyard, when you get there, let them know who you are. And then before you get in your car, before you walk out of those gates, tell them that nobody is allowed to follow you home and they are not allowed to pass through this gate. Nine times out of ten, that works. Um, always leave an offering when you're going and when you're coming. Be respectful. Don't take shit from a person's grave. Um, you know, just be gentle about it. Um, good morning, good morning. Uh, but yeah, working with your land spirits is just like working with other spirits, except for they're completely different. I know this is a very confusing video. Um, but again, I've never, I'm slowly getting to the point where I'm trying to get the knowledge that I know in a way that makes sense out of my head. Um, and I haven't really read books on land spirits. I, I, most of the shit that I've done in my practice, they don't really have books on. Um, we're slowly getting them. We're slowly getting them. Um, but yeah, like be respectful, read the room. Um, there are some lands that can have multiple spirits. Um, but like, like the way that I see where I'm living, because there are multiple different types of ponds and lakes all throughout the place, I believe each lake is kind of it has its own spirit um and then the land itself also has its own spirits um you i mean there are so many benefits from working with them if you lose something talk to the spirits they can help you find it um not to mention if the spirit if you can build that particular relationship you can ask that spirit to affect the property to help with protection or to give your property creepy vibes when you're not there that way nobody wants to fuck with it um Things like that. Also, by the way, if you can, depending on your neighborhood, just hang witchy shit up in your yard. Most people won't fuck with it, depending on where you're at. Um, there, there was one point in time I had my entire fucking altar on my kitchen table, and a couple of neighbors came up uh, randomly and within a week. Like multiple people could not find a certain address, so they're like, "Hey, do you know?" Yeah, let's just say they probably won't be coming back. Um, but, yeah, in general, that, that's going to be the video. It's not that hard to work with your land spirits. You've just got to have patience. Uh, it's just like I say when working with your ancestors. Do not go in it expecting an instant result or an instant answer. Spirits are on their own time, especially when it comes to land spirits. Uh, they're on their own time. They're, they're doing their own thing. So And, again, it also depends on your body. And that's what a lot of people in this practice or just in general practices, they don't tell people is everybody is going to be different because our bodies are all different. Um, but you've got to figure out a way it works with you. Um, and the last thing I'll say before I'll cut the uh, eventually go, yesterday I had a cool moment and I had permission to share. Uh, my partner was back in the bathroom and I was in here. Um, I was riding and fell down the Bridgerton fucking rabbit hole. Um but when he walked in here, always be specific with what you ask for or say. Yes, 100% with that. Be very specific. Um, and by the life of me, do not ask them to control the weather. That can go horribly fucking wrong. Uh, also, that's another way that if you piss your spirits off, it can affect you. Uh, you may have a random drought on just in your area. Um... But uh, yesterday, my partner was in the bathroom, and he walked up here, and as soon as he got halfway up here, like, I felt his energy just shift. There was something weird about him. Um, so I, when he came in here, after he uh, got his drink out of the refrigerator, I called him over here, and I hugged him, and I'm like, all right, what's wrong? And he's like, there's nothing wrong. And I looked at him, and I was like, there's fucking something wrong. Like, have I done something? Um, and he's like, no, there's nothing wrong. And I was like, all right. So I let him walk back in there, and I walked back in there, and I was like, all right, seriously, what the fuck is wrong? Um, and there was actually something wrong, and it was fucking funny because I creeped him out because he was, like, talking shit about me while he was using the bathroom. It's okay. That's the relationship we have. We talk about shit. We talk shit about each other all the time. Um, but, like, he was fucking talking about me, 
And he looked at me when I walked back in there and he goes, you legit just creep me the fuck out. Because he goes, with the AC being on, with your show being on, there's no way fucking in hell you could have even heard me talk back there. And I was like, I didn't. And that's when he told me that, but it legit freaked him out. So that was one of the witchy moments where I pick up on things a lot. I read people a lot. Whether that's magic, empath, or childhood trauma, it still works. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it today. Um, I know, I know, I know, I still have the crystal videos to do. For some reason, there's something preventing me from doing them, so I'm trying to figure that out. With all of my content, if you've been following me for a while, or if you're new here and you're re-watching this, there is no schedule with me. I go as much as I can with the flow of my own body. Um, that's changing, though. I've, I've got books and shit to organize um, and organization them. Um, I'm getting some episodes and interviews and times and dates to be set for the podcast. Um, as always, y'all already know, I still go live on my fa uh, TikToks. Um, normally every day around two or three o'clock. Sometimes I'll do it when I'm cooking dinner. So if you do have one of those, check that out. Um, but yeah, also with that, I am running a full moon special right now. As in, um, my full Oracle readings, I marked them down to $10, and I'll be doing those via email from today all the way until the full moon, which is Monday, um, Sunday through Monday, um, and I'll do five readings per day, so let me know if you're interested in that, um, we've still got, you still got time for the community candle, which is free, and then I'm also doing another community honey jar, I'm excited about this one, uh, this month's honey jar will actually be created on the new moon this month. Um, but I'm excited because I'm adding a couple of crystals in there that I've never used before. Um, and this particular one will be fixed with finances, just all in life, not just your home finances, all finances, uh, to try to kind of, without going into too much detailing, I'm excited about it. Those are $15 per petition just to the amount of honey that I have to use. Um, but yeah, you can direct message me or email me at firelotusthewitch at gmail.com. Um, I'm eventually getting around to trying to make a video on how to make these. Y'all know how I stand with tutorial videos when it comes to magic. I, I'm, I want to make sure I get the fact that you have to um, tap into all the ingredients that you're working with um, and make sure all that energy is balanced and correct. Um, so I'm planning on doing that one. Uh, I plan on doing the crystal videos, hopefully this week as well, the crystal grid videos. It'll be one video, probably about 10 minutes with multiple different crystal grids. Um, and I'm actually going to try to do them outside in the sand because I think that'd be really cool because I don't have a printer. So like some of the shapes that I want to use, I'm not going to be able to print them off necessarily. I have, never mind. I have a coloring book that I can use. Celtic coloring well, a magical coloring book but uh it's got some of the geometrical shapes that i want to use in it so thank y'all for helping me figure that one out um but yeah uh i think that's going to be it for today hopefully i've kept this short and sweet um and then it'll be it'll when i exit out of this it'll go off private and then i'll republish it um, but yeah, also for the people that rewatch this, if you've made it to the end of the video, drop an emoji of a moon and let me know on what different types of videos y'all would like me to make. I need ideas. I have ADHD, so if I sit down trying to make ideas, I'm going to overthink everything. Uh, it's one of the reasons I love going live is because the comments that I get help me unlock shit in my brain. Um, so yeah, let me know if I've not done the video on it. I will totally do one. Um, if, did I ever fix the audio on that one? No, but I think I redid it. I have multiple videos. If you scroll down, I've got to make playlists for them, um, on retrogrades and how to survive them. Crystals. If you're being affected by this retrograde, there are multiple crystals that you can carry on you to help you blunt that. Um, and then Astro Matrix, the app or website. That is what I use for my astrology. It pulls your birth chart. And over time, it helps you understand how to read a birth chart. Um, not to mention, it's basically like a fucking personalized horoscope every day, specifically for you. Uh, the only thing you'll need for that is your uh, time time and location of date of birth, basically the exact moment you were born. If you do not have that, 
You can still create a birth chart, but it'll be a general chart for that entire day versus the exact time you were born. I started wearing silver sheen obsidian for the retrograde season. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. Um, I was about to say, no, I'm not going to say that because here recently, every time I say something like that, apparently I don't say it right. And the universe is like, <laughs> bitch, bet. Um, so yeah, but so far it's been mild. Knock on fucking wood. I'm not excited though about all these fucking placements moving into Aries. Not excited about that because normally that's when it affects me. <sighs> um, but always remember though, during retrogrades, no matter if it's Mercury fucking all, no matter the planet, most retrogrades, anything that happens, it's meant to happen. Most of them, I call retrogrades the Phoenix energy. So, all right, you are getting a bonus, and then I gotta stop. Phoenix energy, which is the universe has told y'all time and time again, this needs to be fixed, this needs to be fixed. It takes it away um, for a new chapter or a new space to be created. Um, and just don't, don't try to resist it. If anything comes your way, do like I do. Depending on the situation, give yourself to give yourself time to completely run around with your chicken with your head cut off. Freak the fuck out. Let those emotions flow. Don't build up. Don't resist them. Let it flow. And then after that, all right, what can I do? If you lose your job, start filling out more job applications right off the bat. Um, things like that. And I understand we all get put into situations to where, like, in other words, don't listen to some of the astrologers about, like, you know, don't start a job right now in retrograde. Believe it or not, in most retrogrades, knock on wood, this doesn't happen this year, uh, my partner has wound up losing a job, and then he turns around within the same week and finds the perfect job. And then it's, yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, there we live we live in a day and an age where if if you don't make money, you yeah, so take the damn job. Um, the only thing, normally what happens if you do take a job in retrograde, most retrogrades, depending on what planet it is, it just kind of hypes it up so it looks like this perfect dream. In reality, once retrograde goes direct, you kind of realize that it's a shitty job, but it's still a job. So, Yes, I did a huge grief shift yesterday, cried for hours, and felt a huge relief. Yes, yeah, see, I do it sometimes randomly thanks to my depression. Um, I'm that type of person who I won't break or snap under pressure. Um, normally, I learned I freak the fuck out when everything is actually calm. Uh, that's when I freak out the most, but I've learned to just let those go. There have been days where I've been in here scrolling through TikTok or a YouTube video, and I just started crying, and I'm like, All right, fuck it, let's go. Um, and normally, it's, it, again, all of our emotions, we hold on to that. Holding on to that affects our physical and our metaphysical bodies. So release that in a safe manner. Go on YouTube. Look up some scream tutorials on how to properly scream without fucking your vocals up or your throat and grab a couple of pillows and just scream into them. I do it periodically depending on the situation. I've done it a lot. Um, showers. If you don't like crying, take a shower. Showers can stimulate crying. So multiple things you can do. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you're interested in anything that I mentioned, direct message me. I keep saying direct message me. Email me, firelotuswitches.gmail.com. If you have any questions about magic or about a spell, message me. I will try my best to help you out. Um, or if you don't know if you want spell work or if you need a reading, mes message me and just say magical consultation. We'll figure it out. But yeah, until then, I hope y'all are all having this amazing energy on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, until then, peace. Also, again, if you've made it this far, drop an emoji in the comments.